coming up on Fresh View. When you know what is contributing to the view you have of God, if it's something contributing positively, Amen. you keep letting it in. Amen. <laughs> and if it's something you know, contributing Amen. negatively, negatively, you push it, push flush it out. out. Yes. So what you let into your mind, and if you want your mind to become enlarged, Amen. to have great visions of God, then you've got to let in the word of God. Engage. Log on to freshdew.tv today and receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Hello, I'm Pastor Nkechiene and today on Fresh Dew, Pastor Shola Kimwale and myself will be continuing our message series, God, God is, is Big in, in me. me. And this is part what? 17. 17. Glory well, be to God. Yeah. So again, a very quick review. The word big means of considerable size or extent larger than other items of the same kind of considerable importance or seriousness generous by now you should know this you know definition by right. heart mm. now the emphasis where we are at now in the second section of this message series is that god is big in me and we said the me actually is the believer then mm. we began to explore how that believer can actually experience the bigness of god from this positional state to the experiential state we looked at Christ being the big God. We saw that Christ came in the flesh. We began to look at our perspective of Christ living in us or being in us. We said, you know, when you get born again, that's the beginning. But it doesn't end there, child of God. Mm. After getting born again, you need to now renew your mind with the word of God. And to renew your mind, you need to understand the basic concept of the tripartite nature of man. Mm. Man is spirit, soul. soul. He has a soul and he, he lives, lives in, in a body. body. So looking at two main concepts, we began to look at two main concepts that will teach us really how to cross over this bridge from the positional to the experiential. So as a believer, you can actually say God is big in me mm. and it is seen in your everyday life, life. and in different areas of your, of your life. So the two concepts, the first one was the mirror, mirror principle. principle. And can we say what the mirror principle is? The mirror you, principle, principle states, states that you, you cannot, cannot act beyond, beyond what, what you behold, behold and, and it, it is, is what, what you behold, behold that, that you, you become. become or, or experience. experience that is an, an awesome <laughs> principle we had, we had fun with that yes we did and then we began to look last time i believe mm. at the magnifying excuse me glass principle and the magnifying glass is a lens that produces an enlarged image and we saw different things there but the basic simple profound truth is this that god is big he doesn't get bigger yeah. he's big but children of god see him differently mm. the way i see him may be different from the way Pastor Shola sees him. Mm. So that's why we need to understand the magnifying glass principles. Let's take it from there. All right. So still, on, still exploring the magnifying mm. uh, glass principle, mm -hmm. uh, a, a pertinent question, simple but powerful question we need to ask ourselves is this, what view, what view or we're asking you, the viewers, what view do you have of God? What's your view of God? How do you see God? That's what the magnifying principle is all about. Mm -hmm. Your perspective and view of God. Is God big to you? Is he small? Mm -hmm. Do you see God involved in your day-to-day -day life? Do you see God as one ogre, you know, 
cruel being and he's just aloof. He doesn't, he's not interested in what happens to people. Is he supportive? Is he punitive? Mm -hmm. And on and on the list can go. That's a question you need to just pause to ask yourself and answer it with all sincerity. Because until you answer this question mm -hmm. and you get the right answer, you're not going to experience the bigness of God we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So it's very key. What view, child of God, do you have of God? Is God big before you or is God small? It's easy to say God is big, but at the end of the day, if you're going to make this, like Pastor said, experiential in your life, this is where it starts from. Okay? And so what view do you have of God? Now, to press that further, we want to explore what the things that combine uh, to produce the view that you have of God Okay, that's and another, another question. We'll it's another there. question, okay. and it's a means to help you answer the question, the first question: What view do you have of God? So let's start by looking at this. The first one I want to touch on is, uh, you know, the combination of three factors. Firstly, what you let into your mind. In other words, your view of God is a combination of three factors. Firstly, what you let into your mind. Now, when you deliberately let the word of God into your mind. Notice that deliberately, mm. consciously, mm. let the word of God into your mind. The effect is that it creates and produces a view of God that is big. That is big. But you must receive the word. You must allow it. Note the key there is deliberately. Because you see, some people, I've heard this from you, some people, you can't expect the word to work in your life if you put it on as background music. Mm, lullaby. Yeah. And so it's just some music, some kind of sound. No, 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 no. The word it's of in your God. Car and you're having conversation. Convert, on yes. You know, yeah, but you could be in your car and the message is playing and it's really impacting you. But you can't treat the word of God with levity and expect it to release its potential and its power. Amen. Amen. So what view do you have? Let's look at First Peter chapter 2. Verse 1 to 2, what do you let into your mind as a child of God? Look at this. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, all hip uh, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, look at this, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. That's lovely. As newborn babes, this letter, this verse is written to babes, but you know, it's the principle applies for the rest of our lives. You see, you can never overgrow or outgrow, I should say, your desire for the word of God. Mm -mm. So it's, we're talking about what you let into your mind. It tells you to allow the word of God come in, the pure word of God that you may grow thereby. And one of the best things a new convert can do is, uh, is for them to be taught how to develop a taste for the word of God. I like that. A, a taste, a taste mm -hmm. for the word of God. You know, we say things like a child has a sweet <coughs> tooth. The interesting thing about uh, appetites, habits, and, you know, sweet They're tooths. They're cultivated. And all that. They're cultivated. Nobody is, more, is like born with, with it. You know, you develop it, and the parents can encourage it. What they allow the kids to, to play with, to eat, nibble upon, will develop over time in them. And one of the best things a mentor can do for somebody who is born again is to emphasize the primacy, the importance, the first place of the word of God, pure in, the pure, the unadulterated Undiluted. milk. Of the word of God in its concentrated form yeah. that you may grow thereby. And desiring it is not just desiring it, you know, for the sake of desiring it. The proof, somebody has said the proof of desire, desire is pursuit. I think it's like murder. Yes, yeah. yes. So you can't say you desire the word of God and you don't have time for it. Mm -hmm. If you desire the word of God, then you will lay aside things that will distract you or hinder you from receiving the word of God, which is why these verses interestingly say, Verse 2 talks about desiring the pure milk of the word. But verse 1 talks about things you should set aside. In other words, if those things are not set aside, they will inhibit your progress in the word and they will affect your desire, your taste for the, for the word of God. Amen. Amen. So look at James 1.21. Still pushing this a bit further. 
Therefore, lay aside all filthiness against him principle and overflow of wickedness. Now look at this. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Remember we've mentioned the fact that it's your, you, what you let into your mind. Mm. Now God is magnified in your mind, in your soul, mm. you know, your perspective of him, your view of him. But you see, we said earlier on, uh, in, in an earlier part, I can't mm. recall, mm. we talked about the fact, you mentioned the fact that when, when Adam sinned, mm. his view of the magnificence and the bigness of God came down crashing. And ever since that time, one of the greatest effects sin had, you know, we talk about the effects of sin, people talk about one of the greatest effects of sin is that it shriveled man's perspective of God. Man, God just became some, like we talked about, maybe some aloof being, so, to where even in some cases God is really non-existent. So it reduced that. Now when you begin to receive the word of God, the word is able, not here he's saying, he didn't say to save your spirit. If you're born again, your spirit is saved. But he's saying save your soul. That means your mind. That means as you begin to receive the word of God, your perception of God, which may have been warped, skewed, dented, affected by sin, the word of God begins to rectify it. And before you used to see God as smug, who couldn't do anything, who was aloof, non-interested in your life, punitive. all of it punitive, <laughs> judgmental, is with, with, big, with a big club ready to beat your brains out. <laughs> now you begin to see that he's love. He father. cares for me. He's father. That's who he is. And he wants my best. And as you begin to see him, that he can do things, even that perception of the things he can do in, for you begins to become enlarged. And that's why we receive the word of God. I like something you, 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 you've said severally. You know, you don't read the word of God to fulfill a religious obligation or to mark chat. Oh, I've read my, I've read my chapter today. Or oh, for pastors to look for a message. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I have a sermon I need yes, to Yes, yes. That's I, the only time some pastors read their Bible. What's even worse now, pastor, is that, you know, everything is online. Yeah. A lot of ministers go shopping and farming for messages online. Yeah. I really wonder how that is done. I don't know. You know, and, you know, so you, to receive, you have to receive God's word wholly and without questioning, mm -hmm. and it will consummate in acting what you That's what why you, in, in Luke 1, you yes. see what Mary said there. <laughs> yes. My soul does what? Magnifies Magnify. the Lord. So it's in your soul that wow. you magnify the Lord. Wow. And the word of God is the tool for that. Wow. And so as that happens, yeah. our view of God becomes changed. Wow. Our minds become renewed. And the process of renewing our minds, get this, your understanding or your mind becomes enlightened. And listen to this child of God, enlightened eyes produced and en produce enlarged visions of God. Say Can I say that again? Say it again. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Enlightened <laughs> eyes produce. produce enlarged visions of God. No wonder Paul in Ephesians, that masterpiece of the triumph of Jesus Christ, after he talked about what God did, the only thing Paul prayed for us, he begins to pray for us, is for the eyes of our understand. understanding to be enlightened. And one of the things he talks about, so that we can see the exceeding greatness, that's the magnitude, the Glory bigness of God. God. Glory, Glory to God. God. Glory to God. So we're looking at the question, what contributes to, this. to the view you have of God. So, mm -hmm. Pastor Shola has a view of God. Amen. I have a view Amen. of God. Everybody right. else, he has a view of God. Right. So, we all have things contributing to that view. Yes. And now yes. you've taught us that one thing that contributes is what, what you, you let, let in. in. But yes. you know what's also interesting? Yes. Another thing that contributes is what you flush, flush out That's good. of your mind. Mm. So, it's all happening in the mind. That's yes. where God is either enlarged or he's, oh, he's diminished. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about the magnifying glass principle. Child of God, what view do you have of God and what is contributing? Because you see, mm. when you know mm. what is contributing to the view you have of God, if it's something contributing positively, Amen. you keep letting it in. Amen. <laughs> and if it's something you know, contributing ne negatively, negative. you push it, push flush it out. out. Yes. So what you let into your mind, and if you want your mind to become enlarged, Amen. to have great visions of God, then you've got to let in the word of God, like mm. Pastor Allah has just taught us. But you see, there also another contributing factor is what you flush out mm. of your mind. Look at what the scripture says in Ephesians 4. Hmm. And you know, when we talk about flushing out things hmm. from your mind, let me say this, that many times as children of God, there's a lot of by power and by might hmm. energy hmm. to flush out things that are undesirable. Hmm. Oh, I really want to stop doing this. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to fast and pray for 70 uh, days. And if this happens, I will stop doing it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of effort. Hmm. Well, we're going to show you self-will. 
You begin to read all these self-will yeah. authors and yeah. self-consciousness. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with self, child of God. You're going to find out now that you can actually easily flush things that are undesirable out mm. of your mind mm. without it being a by power and by might decision or a struggle. Mm. Look what Ephesians, I mean, it may start as a decision you make. Yeah. When you get born again, you make a decision, say, look, I want to to work with this thing I've just entered into. Mm -hmm. I want to become a new man in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. But there is a way that you can get that done easily. Amen. Ephesians 4.20. Mm -hmm. He says, but you have not so learned Christ. Mm -hmm. If indeed, note that in 21. If indeed you have heard, heard. him and you have been taught mm -hmm. by him. Mm -hmm. it's good. I want to pause. Mm -hmm. If indeed, child of God. You see, this is the precursor to what we're about to read. Right. If indeed, remember we just learned as a newborn babe, you should... Develop a taste hmm. for the word of God. Desire hmm. the word of God. Want to be in a Bible-believing church Amen. where the word of God is taught. Don't hmm. despise the teaching of the word of mm -hmm. God. Don't despise the systematic, you know, breakdown of the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept. Amen. Hear, and a little, hear a little, very little, very little. You should develop that taste. Hmm. Don't be that born-again Christian who gets born again and wants some action. You know, I want fire and brimstone. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> Let me go to a place where if I somersault seven times, yeah. my problem gets solved. Yeah. No, 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 mm. child of God. You must develop a taste mm. for the word of God. And that's what he's saying here in verse 21. Mm. If indeed you have heard, heard him, you've been listening, and you have been taught by him that's as the, the truth pure. is in Jesus. And that's the pure milk, right? That's there. the pure the milk. Pure, unadulterated. Undiluted. It's right there. Mm. The pure milk. But you've got to develop a taste for it. Mm. Look at what verse 22 says. That, that you, you put, put off. off. Mm. That's where the power to put off mm. comes from. Mm. It's good. From it comes from that truth. Yeah. yeah. You have heard him. Mm. You have been you taught, taught by him. You've been taught what? The truth, truth. that is in Jesus. Grace and truth Amen. came, came, in, through. came, came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Not the law. Grace and truth came through Jesus. So you have heard him. You have been taught by him, child of God. And look at how easy verse 22 becomes. Mm. That you put off <laughs> concerning your former mm. conduct. We talked about former conduct mm -hmm. the other day. Mm -hmm. We all must have a former conduct. Praise God. That should be your testimony. Mm. I had a former conduct. Mm. Your former conduct cannot be your conduct after you're born again. There's got to be a change, a growth pattern. So he says, You put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed good. in the spirit of mm. your mind. Mm. In other words, in the essence of your mind. It's good. Be renewed, child of God. And that renewal happens with the word of God. Mm. You have heard him. You have taught, you've been taught by him. You've been taught the truth of the word. Now just relax and find out that you can actually begin to flush out those things that you don't want anymore. And he says in verse 24, and that you put on mm. the new man, God. which was created <laughs> according to mm. God in true righteousness and holiness. Mm. The more you have intercourse, with the word of God. That's how intimate it should mm. be. Mm. So I deliberately use that word intercourse. Mm. The more you have intercourse, intimacy with the word of God, the more your view of God will get bigger and bigger. Mm. It will get bigger one by what you're letting in, mm. but that's how the flushing, flushing. out thing happens. Yeah. You know, imagine if you're if we were talking earlier, you know, if you if you if you if you're cleaning mm. and some pipe, you know, some plumbing situation, some, something is blocked. And you try and try, you scream, it's not working. Do you know one of the, one of the most powerful forces yeah. to push out that filth from that block pipe is what? Water. Water, water under, under pressure. high pressure. Amen. And you're pumping that water, you're pumping that water through. And what's happening? You are flushing, flushing. out undesirable things, things because you are hitting the undesirable things with the word of mm. God. Mm. So it's not some energy, some, some difficult, yeah. uh, some struggle. No. Continue to hit the word of God in, mm. into your spirit and mm. into your mind. Continue mm. to flush the, the word of God into you. And as mm. that happens, those undesirable things just begin to, just yeah. begin to move. Yeah. And it's, so just imagine that picture. You're pumping that thing with a hose, mm. with, with high pressure, pressure water. Yeah. That's the word of God. Amen. And that, that's flushing out the things that are undesirable. So the contributions to the view mm. you have of God are what you are letting into your mind yeah. and what you have let out. flushed out of your mind. Look at Colossians 3, 8. Mm. It says, but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language yeah. out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another mm. since you've put off Both already the old man with his deeds and you've put on the new mm. man which is renewed, renewed in knowledge. knowledge. That's, That's the key. key. Mm. That's the differentiator. Mm. Mm. According, According to the image. We talked about that. That's the big God. <laughs> give me a five. Give me a five. According to the image 
of, of him, him who created, who created him. him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, hmm. circumcised nor uncircumcised, Jesus. barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ, Christ is, is all, all and, and in all. all. Amen. Do you want your view of God hmm. you know, to be strengthened? Hmm. Watch what you're letting into your mind. Hmm. Watch what you're flushing out of your mind. Hmm. And, and let, let, let me just say this before I quickly try and you know, we, we, we end this. He says, listen to this. God is systematically magnified. And your view of him flushes out things that you believed about mm. him that were small, Lim limiting, and mm. inconsistent with the word of God. Amen. That's lovely. You believe God wants to steal from you when you're taught to give and pay your tithe. Mm. You believe God wants to punish you every time mm. you sin. Mm. And if you sin, you're going straight to hell. You have mm. to get born again again. Mm. These are all inconsistent with the word of God. Mm. These are all limiting views of God. You, the certain things you just cannot do if you believe that God is small, mm. limiting, accusatory, punitive. But as you continue to let in the word and the word now flushes out these things, you begin to see God through that magnifying glass. Yeah. And that's the power of the word of God as a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. It actually makes God bigger, bigger in your view. But guess what it also does? It shrinks shrivel. and shrivels those things yeah. that are inconsistent with the word of God. So it's like the pressure of the water is pushing in this direction mm. and the undesirable things are leaving in the other direction. Mm. The magnifying glass is showing you, mm. wow, God is love. Wow, God is father. God is mercy. God is big. God is generous. God is awesome. God loves me. God is forgiving. Mm. And as all of that is happening, God is wicked. Mm. God is hateful. Mm. God is judgmental. Mm. God Amen. is unkind. Shrivels. God it just becomes Shriv smaller so and smaller. Until it totally disappears. disappears. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. And then you see God for who God is really. really is. Glory be to Amen. God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So as our minds become renewed to the word of God, the word of God becomes the lens. You don't need any other mm. lens child of God. You don't need the traditional lens, yeah. religious mm. lens. Mm. You need the lens of the word of God. Mm. Amen. 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 I'm trying to decide whether we should try <laughs> and jump into the last, last point or not. But let, let's just crash this in yes. the next one minute. Mm. You, know, you know, so we said th three things, yeah. two things. What you let in, what you flush out, and yeah. what's the last one? The, what, the last one is what you keep from getting into your mind. Let's take that one for like a keep, minute now. <laughs> what you keep from getting into your mind. Yeah. Proverbs 4.23, look yeah. at this. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Yeah. Keep your heart. Guard that, it. Guard it. And that, again, your heart refers to your mind. Your mind is part of, is part of your heart. So it says, keep it, for out of it flow all the issues of life. And if you recall the story of David and Saul, one of the things that helped David was his innocence. One of the things that helped David was his innocence because he wasn't exposed to those 40 days of Saul taunting Goliath, Goliath excuse me, Goliath, you know, breathing cold and hatred words of fear compared with the army of Israel and Saul. So he had Being that. Protected and guarded. He was protected. His heart was guarded. That's why the Bible says we should guard our heart with all diligence. There are things God expects us to know, but there are things we shouldn't even bother ourselves about knowing. Because if we know those things, it, they are going to affect our views of God. So your mind is not only re renewed by the, allowing in the word of God, it's equally renewed by what you take, flush out of your heart, but it is also renewed by what you, you put a door, a, sorry, a guard on the door of your heart. Thank you, Father. Thank wow. you, Father. Wow. Thank you, Father. Wow. Thank you, Father. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Father. Father, we're just grateful. Thank you. Thank you for all you're teaching us in this message <laughs> series. Thank you because we're learning to view you through the magnifying glass of your word. Amen. And we're going to see just how big Amen. and how big Amen. and how really big you are. Amen. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you. In the Father. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today, he's waiting for you with arms open wide. 
and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. You know, we want to take out this time to just specially tell you about this awesome book, Winning in Crisis, by Pastor Charles Omo from Pastor Charles was my pastor. He taught me everything that I know in ministry. And uh, he was a very great man of God, the founding pastor of the Carpenters Church. Win in Christ is an exciting book because he talks about the story of David and Goliath. And he teaches how many principles? About seven, seven about seven awesome principles in this book. You know, everybody comes through crisis one time or the other in their lives. But Win in Christ it will teach you seven principles, real principles, that will teach you how to get out of crisis in your life. Some of these principles are the principle of the covenant, the principle of the promises in God's word, the principle of his, faith. of his faithfulness, the principle of favor with God, our favor with our God, favor with God. Mm -hmm. the principle of the name, name of the Lord of, of hosts, hosts, Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. the principle of seeing the end result, mm -hmm. and the principle of course. corresponding action. For anybody who knew Pastor Charles knew that David and Goliath were his favorite, favorite of him. Yes, so we really would like to recommend this book, Winning in Crisis. You'll find out on the screen all the places you can go and buy them either online. I'm sure an ebook copy is available as well. Bookshops everywhere. Spread the word around about Winning in Crisis. It will help you get out of crisis in your life. Amen. Get your copy of Winning in Crisis, a book by Pastor Charles or Mofoma. Visit freshdew.tv or call 0700 get media to place your order today also available at bookshops nationwide here's how to join the fresh dew partnership circle go to freshdew.tv register and that's it you become a partner financial partners can give online by clicking the give to fresh dew link on the homepage or call 0700 Fresh Dew for more details.